Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Pastor B. Um, I just watched the movie American Fiction, and I was thinking, do Christians pander for profit? Like, do we um, try to gain the whole world and lose our soul in the process? Um, we're going to talk about that today. We're talking about um, what's necessary. Is it possible? be a uh, successful Christian content creator and hold on to your integrity and values, all right? Well, uh, this is a good conversation. This movie sparked uh, some interesting thoughts. So we're going to go ahead and jump into that right now, all right? Let's go. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Living from Sunday to Sunday podcast. I'm your host, Pastor B. And I uh, thank you guys so much for listening and tuning in to today's episode. I believe this is going to be the best 15 minutes of your day because real change happens 15 minutes at a time. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast everywhere where they may be found if you're watching this um, Make sure that you hit the like button and um, hit subscribe on my YouTube page as well so that we can grow this uh, this channel um, equally, all right? Um, thank you guys again for everything that uh, you guys are doing uh, for this particular podcast. So I literally just um, came from the theater um, watching a movie called American Fiction. American Fiction um, and it is a um, movie that has a lot of great actors in it, um, from Jeffrey Wright to Issa Rae, um, Sterling P. Brown, um, Tracy Ellis Ross, Erica Alexander. Um, really, really great cast. Um, and the the main premise of the movie is there is an author who is a very brilliant author, who um, his specific genre um, of writing is not selling well. It's, he is a, they never technically like outline what his genre of of, uh, books that he's writing, they never really uh, state that, Um, but, it is not a genre that is very popular, right? It's not one um, that is um, making a lot of money, right? And so um, Issa Rae's character, um, she writes a book that is in a Jeffrey Wright's mind. He's the main, he's the main character. Um, Thelonious Monk is his name. Um, in in his mind, the level of grammar, the vernacular, the subject matter um, is of a substandard to what he uh, writes, right? He doesn't see the writing, the tone, um, or even the message of the book. He doesn't see it as a um, as dignified. But yet this particular book, is one that is extremely popular. And so he goes to a a book convention um, and his particular book has like 15 people in the room. Um, But Issa Rae's character, uh, I think her name is Sonera Golden, I believe. Um, Her book is in a room packed with people. And specifically, it is a room that um, it's filled with white people, right? And so I think the the overall theme of the book, uh, of the movie rather, is how white people love black stories. They love black trauma. They love um, stories of the hood, right? And they'll do whatever it takes to um, regurgitate those stories because those are the types of stories that sell. And so um, Monk, he writes a, 
a story um, as a joke, as a parody of what's popular. And the, the publishers, his agent, they, they pitch it and they love it, right? They give him like a $750,000 advance. Um, and he's conflicted, right? Because initially he wrote it as a joke. As like a um, as a middle finger to um, society, and it's exceedingly popular. And so, as I see him struggle with trying to maintain this fake character that um, um, society says they want, versus him struggling with the reality that his brilliance, his genius, um, isn't popular. I found myself thinking about um, this podcast, thinking about my um, just personal, you know, journey as a as a creative um, person, and how you know at what point do you believe in your art to the, um, so much in fact that you don't change who you are in order to make people like you, right? Um, and and sometimes as a believer, as as a Christian, um, and I don't consider myself a, a Christian content creator. I'm, I just create content and I love God, right? Um, but I do know that a lot of my content is in, is inspirational in nature. Um, it's Bible based, right? Um, so I mean, people put me in their box. I get it. But what I've noticed is with with uh, content period, um, there is a certain formula that gets you dollars. There's a certain formula that gets you seen. There's a certain formula that uh, brings ads, right? And a lot of it is based on on being um, controversial, on um, shocking people with a question or with a statement, and you know, I've always had to ask myself, am I in it for the money? Or am I in it just to um, connect and um, encourage people? Because many times, this isn't, you know, one of the top podcasts in the city or in the country or in the world, right? Um, and I have to be okay with uh, putting out what I believe God wants me to say and letting it reach the people that it's supposed to reach, right? Could I do a better job in marketing? Sure, right? Um, it's so funny. I even look at like my, my TikTok, right? Um, I just recently posted a video um, and, you know, TikTok, if you are a, a creator, um, there's an, uh, an algorithm for everything, right? One specifically for TikTok, one specifically for Facebook, one specifically for IG. And so, you know, TikTok is, is real slick. Um, a lot of the videos I post I only get like 200 views or yeah, 200 views, right? And so they see that, right? That a lot of your videos have a, you know, small window views so then the people i don't know if people will have created videos specifically targeting uh, creators who have 200 view videos and like ways to, to grow and ways to to kind of uh, expand your reach um i've always had to ask myself is this something that i would be willing to do and if i do this will it compromise who i am Will I, um, will my message have to change? Or can I just take the message, use a different method and see if that works, right? Because, you know, I'm not really a controversial type, type person, right? Um, I don't want there to be anything in my presentation that's fiction. And, and, and that's the, the dilemma that Monk had in his movie that he um, 
he created something that was uh, inauthentic to, to who he really, really was, but people love the inauthentic person. Like he was able to make money and take care of his ailing mother, right? And, you know, he had all of these uh, family issues that, you know, kind of presented a need for him to make money, right? His his sister dies tragically, like within the first like 15 minutes of the movie, 20 minutes of the movie. And so he has this, um, <clears throat> this need, he has bills, right? He has a, a mother who has all, Alzheimer's, right? And so someone has to take care of, of his mom. He has a, a brother who isn't as responsible as he is, right? And he just has this background of being very standoffish, right? Doesn't easily connect with other people. Um, and, you know, when there is a, when you have a need, does your core value, do you substitute your core values in order to meet a need, right? And that's been, you know, that's the, the dilemma, I believe, for all Christians, especially in today's social media age, right? It is, there is a formula to make a quick book, but that formula oftentimes causes us to do things outside of our, um, outside of who we are sometimes. And so, you know, is, is that a risk you're willing to take in order to gain a certain status, right? And so I think that's the, the, um, the process that I have. Um, when it comes to, to just personally being able to, can I um, take this route of a content creator without losing myself, right? Is it worth it? Many times, you know, changing who you are in order to gain worldly positions and um, possessions, even if there is a, a general need, losing your soul, we're never able to gain the world, right? Um, we either get it and we can't hold on to it, or we get it and it ruins our lives, right? And so, um, you know, that's the, the dilemma. One of the other things that I thought about was the understanding or the, or the um, acceptance of there being more than one ways to represent Black people, right? Um, he is a genius author who has one um, way of seeing the world. And yet, um, um, society wants a different type of black person, and so he has this judgmental thought and judgmental tone against a representation of black people that he didn't grow up with, or that he just doesn't like, right? And I remember. Um, I think I've said this on this podcast before that for a long time, I didn't like Tyler Perry movies because I felt that he, um, he represented black people in a way that I didn't grow up with. Right. That, and so I didn't have a lot of the, the drama field um, situations that his movies are ripe with. Right. And so I had a disdain for a lot of his stuff. But really what I found out is even though I don't have an experience that matches what what he um, the content in the shows that he produces, there are a lot of people who resonate with what he does. And so I was out of bounds for hating everybody who liked Tyler Perry stuff just because I can't relate. Right. And I think. We do that a lot of times as as believers. Um, we denigrate people um, who have different life experiences than us, and we want them to um, to acquiesce to our life experience. When really, we should kind of see life from their point of view, right? We should be willing to accept that there are people 
who live life opposite ways than us. They have a different background, right? So they see life from a different point of view. Um, uh, Cliff, which was played by Sterling P. Brown, he said something that I thought was interesting. Um, he essentially came out of the closet as a gay man um, because he cheated on his wife with a with man, right? And so his father passed away um, prior to all of this transpiring. And he, he tells Monk, he said, one of the things that um, hurts me the most is that my father never got to see who I truly was, right? I was holding this part of me back out of fear of him not accepting me. And whenever you grow up, especially in the church, I think um, that fear of rejection keeps us a lot of times from fully embracing all of who we are and, and all of who God created us to be. Um, and, you know, and so we live life short, um, like we live like a, a, a short change life. Like we don't really fully embrace all of who we are because we're afraid of some figures who um, have a separate life experience. We don't want them to, to reject us, right? Um, and so he was trying to encourage Monk to be, you know, that there are people who love you for who you are, right? You just got to let people in. Uh, you can't be so guarded. You can't be, um, you can't throw people away when, whenever, when all they're really trying to do is just get close to you. And so I, I think, you know, that's a good concept in our relationships with people. And now we're, um, you know, some of us, we rob ourselves of really rich relationships and rich friendships because we don't, we're not comfortable uh, showing all of who we are because we think when people see us, they're going to reject us, right? We've, we've sent in our um, representative, right? And we feel that the representative is the people, is a person that people love and really wants the uh, veneer or the shine of the representative goes away, those around us, we can kind of sense that something is different, something is changing because it's very difficult to uphold um, the um, persona and the performance of somebody that you're really not. It's difficult to maintain that um, because the true person always comes out. No matter how hard we try, no matter how fake we try to be around people, the um, who we are always comes out. And so, you know, there's a there, there's a question because now Monk's his his personality was changing. He was depressed because he's trying to uphold these two people. One he knows is fake, but people love, and it makes him money. But the true essence of who he is is actually the person that his girlfriend falls in love with. And so he's around his girlfriend all the time, knowing that he has the struggle, knowing that he has, um, you know, these two uh, members warring in his in his soul, right? Um, and he's trying to wrestle with: Should I tell my girlfriend that I've put out this representative of myself, who's not really, you know, who I am, and I'm profiting from it, right? Um, so I think it's it's important, man. Um, if you haven't seen this movie, it's a good movie. Like it's it's uh, it has really great um, performances, like I mentioned earlier, from all of the actors. Um, and one last thing I want to talk about: this is this episode is going to be a little longer because it's a movie review, but I really like the movie and it was thought provoking. So the last thing, there's a quote that um, I think it's Sonora Golden. Is the is uh, the character's name? This is the character played by Issa Rae, um, and it says, "Potential is what people see when what's in front of them isn't good enough." And I thought about that because you know, um, a lot of times, and and I don't think this is true in every case, but sometimes people look past who you are for who they want you to be 
And sometimes they will um, state that, man, you have so much potential to be so much greater, right? Um, and in some cases, I think they are um, trying to box you into who you currently are, right? And they don't want you to grow. But in some cases, who you are is enough. Who you are is enough. And you don't recognize it. And so um, many times, um, if you just recognize that who you are right now in the moment is enough, then whoever I eventually grow to be, that's cool. But it's not, it doesn't define all of who I am and all that I'll ever be. So I think it's important that we value who we are, that um, we're not ashamed of, of the progress that either has been made or that hasn't been made. Um, because potential is true. I mean, potential is, you know, you can't really take potential and, and you know, get paid off of potential, right? Eventually you do have to... Um, or do something. But I believe that if you see potential as, hey, who I am, where I am, what I have is good enough to start, right? Um, potential keeps you frozen where you are. But I think if we change your, your mindset, if we change our mindset about um, how valuable we are, then that starts the process of, of production, right? Um, so overall, this movie is one that, um, like I said, really had me thinking, really um, kind of shows the, um, the pandering a lot of times that our society um, does for our, you know, as, as Black people. White people love us. They love what they can get out of us. They love the money that they can make off of us, but, it, but they don't love us, right? Um, and in some cases, people would rather cater to what's popular so they can get paid versus remain um, um, authentic to who they are. And, you know, one of the um, key conversations in the movie is Issa Rae's character he recognized that there was an audience that needed to have certain stories told. And even though other people may see it as, um, you know, they may not um, agree with how popular it is because it um, glamorizes things that are outside of their experience, it doesn't um, negate the fact that those stories need to be told. And it's so ironic with this movie um, coming out uh, and me watching it today because a couple of shows that Issa Rae has produced and written and directed on HBO Max, they've been canceled. Like Insecure, you know, was I think ran for like five seasons. It's a great show. Um, but there's a, a, a rap-based show that just came out um, that was canceled after two seasons, too. So it's crazy, man, um, and kind of ironic um, that, you know, there was a certain subset of, of shows and subset of, of, um, of stories that are, like, there's a, a shelf life, unfortunately, for those ideas. So, all right, that's all I had to say. Um, I like the movie. Go check it out. Um, and thank y'all for listening to uh, today's episode. Um, of course, this podcast can be found everywhere where they're made available. Uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Good Pods, everywhere where you catch your, your podcast, please make sure that you subscribe to them um, and download them and let somebody else know how this podcast is blessing you. All right. Um, and until next time, I'll see you when I see you.
Y'all have a good day. Thank you for listening to the Living from Sunday to Sunday podcast. All episodes are available everywhere where podcasts can be found. Make sure that you like the show, download, and subscribe so you won't miss out on any of the future episodes. Remember, real change happens between Sundays. Talk to you soon.